What is good for Africa is good for the world. And this has never been more true with the climate crisis. Excellencies, friends, my name is Patrick Fakoyan. I'm the CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation. Welcome. I think if you're here today, it is because you know, you know Africa is unstoppable. We all believe in it. But as Kristalina reminded me yesterday, Africa is also at the crossroads. And as Amina reminded me yesterday, the international community itself is at a crossroads too. Because if COP27 fails, all the gains of Glasgow, ALOC, will have been squandered. Global climate cooperation will suffer a massive setback that nobody can afford. An African cup on African soil, as Africa is the world's most vulnerable continent. And following an extraordinary summer, we should have shivers thinking, what happens if Africa's great rivers suddenly dry up or go riot? We know, of course, that one third of Pakistan is underwater today. And in Jackson, Mississippi, very recently, a million water bottles have been handed out. This is the climate crisis in action. <clears throat> but in Africa, climate shocks are going to hit home even harder. And we must, we must be ready for it. But as you said, President Macky Sall, Africa itself will not stop. It has awoken, it is the engine of the world economy, but it won't continue unless Africa adapts. All of us, all of us everywhere would feel the fallout of Africa not adapting. It cannot, it cannot be contained, but we don't have to go there. This year I have been extremely inspired by my travels in Africa. I was in Kenya, I was in DRC with you, President uh, Chisi Kedi. I was in Ghana visiting you, uh, President Akufo Addo. And only a few days ago, I was with you, President Macky Sall, in Senegal. I've seen firsthand Africans taking adaptation action. <laughs> I've seen the resilience of the people. Africa is standing up, and its adaptation solutions are ready to be scaled up. And when I was in Kenya, I visited a community in Makwene. And there was a song, and, and Secretary General and Faike, I will not sing it here, I will not embarrass particularly myself. But the lyric was, you climb a mountain and you find good things on top of it. So you climb a mountain and you find good things on top of it. And adaptation in Africa is like climbing this mountain but it is also a massive, massive opportunity for transformation, for jobs, for growth, for development. And I'm sure that with all of you in this room today, if you look around, just look around briefly, with all of you here in this room today, we have the dream team to climb this mountain together. So excellencies, of course, as part of our journey climbing this mountain, the next summit after today, is Sharm el Sheikh. But success in Egypt will hinge on whether Africa's needs are met or not. An adaptation action in Africa needs to be front, it needs to be center. Fortunately, Africa has the commitment. Fortunately, Africa has the plan. We just saw in the video the triple AP the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. It's Africa developed, it's Africa owned. It was launched by Africa's leaders and Africa's leaders are here with us again today. They remind us that the Triple AP is Africa's flagship venture and that it is the vehicle for delivering the Africa Adaptation Initiative. The program, it has the scale, the program has the ambition to deliver what Africa and the African Union 
expects in terms of adaptation support. No other, no other African adaptation projects comes close in terms of ambition. What is it? A 25 billion US dollars over five years program. Is that too ambitious? No. Africa's adaptation finance gap is $41 billion a year. AAAP is therefore about turning the tide on resilience in Africa. And what is more, the AAAP already has the track record to deliver. Since launching last year, more than three billion US dollars of investments on the ground for people in Africa have become reality. And half of the needed funds, $12.5 billion, are already there. The other half, though, another 12.5 billion US dollars, remains to be mobilized. My very good friend, my big brother, President Adesina, is going to update you on the way forward on the AAAP, on the billions for Africa. And obviously, that's also why it's good that Mahmoud is here with us. COP27 is the opportunity to close in on that target. Another realistic milestone for COP27 is to complete the more modest 250 million US dollars upstream financing facility. What is that? Well, actually, it's the transmission belt to mainstream adaptation in all large-scale projects of the DFIs. It's the millions needed to shape the trillions and the billions. With its demonstrated leverage ratio of 1 to 100, the upstream financing facility is also a smart investment. It's good value for your money. So let's make the upstream financing facility and the ADF replenishment, which Akeem will talk about, a success in Sharm el -Sheikh. And in doing so, let us secure presence. Africa is unstoppable indeed by unlocking its full adaptation pot potential together. And that is, that is the adaptation breakthrough for COP27 we're all striving for. We have to, we have to double down on adaptation this year. The Global Center on Adaptation, we thank every one of you so be, for being part of this movement for many, many years. But let's now turn this summit today into an action agenda. And it's my honor to first invite the co-conveners of this summit today. First and foremost, the person who is driving this agenda when you were at the helm of the United Nations. The person who is the co-chair of the board of the Global Center on Adaptation, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. You have the floor, sir.